This is a Dell Dimension 2100. And as someone who is certified in IT and cybersecurity, I think that if you're looking for a good Windows 98 PC that isn't too expensive, this might be a good option. I'll show you some of the aspects such as the components, applications, and try playing a few games, both 2D and 3D, and I'll give my opinion on it. So let's get started. So this model was introduced in 2001. I can't find too much information about it online. However, I found information about it in two CNN articles and it being referenced in another CNN article from the time. And CNN said that this it was a great home computer for the time. And something significant is that this was a particularly early Windows XP computer. So much so that some models weren't even shipped with XP and shipped with Windows 98 Millennium Edition or 2000 instead. However, I'm not going to go too much into history for once because I do not have internet. Uh, yeah, it died. There was very bad weather a couple days ago, so don't throw slop at me because of that. The Dell Dimension 2100 was provided in various configurations. For example, you could choose which processor, either the Intel Pentium 3 or the Intel Celeron that was the counterpart to that, which would be a SAC at 370, and the operating system. This specific configuration was manufactured on Halloween of 2001, not even a week after Windows XP came out, and has an Intel Celeron socket 370 at 1.1 gigahertz and 256 megabytes of RAM which is just barely enough to load the Windows installer for Windows 7 and Vista. But now that I've gotten that out of the way, I think we should take a look at the front and rear of the system. On the front, there aren't any USB ports, which is a bit of a downside. However, there is a disk drive, a floppy drive, and two stickers that are on the bottom, at least on mine, with one of these looking really disgusting. I should probably do something about that, but it's uh, something for another day. On the rear, on the other hand, we have a Kensington security lock, a power supply, PS2, USB, VGA, parallel, serial, the diagnostic lights, a networking card, a sound card, which this in particular is a Creative Labs sound blaster of some sort, as well as Ethernet and a modem. Getting inside this model is not too difficult because of a uh, toolless mechanism. Now that we're in, I'm going to set up my anti-static wristband, and thankfully, this computer has uh, two thick edges around the chassis, which make for good places to put the anti-static wristband on. This is something that is a little bit important when you're working on computers, if you're not aware, since exposure to static electricity can cause damage to the components, so it's important to have one of these. Our hard drive is mounted on the front of the chassis, behind the power button and all the other things, and we can move the power supply out of the way using one of these things to get access to the CPU. CPU and cooling components and whatnot. Going a bit inside of here, you'll notice that the capacitors on this model are in surprisingly good condition, which is nice because this was at the start of a, a infamous time period known as a capacitor plague that affected a lot of different computer manufacturers, including Dell. Also, on a side note, this uh, thing has a working CMOS battery, which is rather impressive, but otherwise it's your fairly typical computer internals. So let's put this back into a working state and by the way, getting this side panel back on is a bit confusing. Uh, I spent four minutes trying to figure out how to put it back on. Booting into Windows 98 is pretty much instantaneous. However, I did need to install a USB driver for this case because, well, my PS2 mouse seems to have a few bent pins and it's kind of hard to put in there, so I didn't want to go through that pain right now for this video after having spent four minutes trying to put the side panel back on. But in terms of software, we have Microsoft Word 97 along with the rest of Microsoft Office 97 where I can make um, very edgy jokes about Clippy that he seems to not notice very much, as well as Adobe Photoshop 5.0, which can also be used to, to save screenshots in a non-bitmap format. I also have Winamp installed, which generally goes to show what that sound card in here is capable of. It'll become a bit more noticeable later on when we try a few games. 
In terms of another aspect, namely web browsing, I have two web browsers installed which are pretty much uh, comparing fire and ice. Especially in the corporate world from this time, because of the fact that the two web browsers are Netscape Navigator 3 and Internet Explorer 5. And in terms of software development, I have Visual Studio 6.0 Enterprise on here, including Visual Basic, where I decided to make a little bit of a very, very basic sample application that does nothing that I called the magic button. And because it'd be funny to make a program and have it do literally nothing while having a very intriguing name. I didn't name the EXE correctly though, but I fixed that. I'm gonna move on and try a handful of games games here. I'm going to play three 3D games and three 2D games. And let's start off with the 3D titles, since they're more resource intensive. I decided to give Half-Life a bit of a proper go this time, and well, given that my previous time ever playing this title was on a 2006 Toshiba laptop that was handling it being very warm and stuff, I can say that my experience playing Half-Life was a bit better than playing it on that Toshiba tech rock. Another title I gave a shot was Quake, which also goes to show how different FPS titles were back in the 90s, and how one game could be much different from another, while both being in the same genre. Moving on from FPS titles, we have Need for Speed 2 SE, which is a racing game, and, well, I've actually played it a few times on here, and it's quite fun. Onwards to the 2D titles, we have Age of Empires, which is very enjoyable for me, and I actually played it a bit after I recorded this video. We also have the parody title, Microsoft Windblows 98, which is a parody of Microsoft from the time, which goes back to what I mentioned about Netscape, Navigator, and Internet Explorer earlier. Last but not least, there's Fallout, which works on here. I'll say this, there are a few titles that I wish I could have tried on here, but didn't. Namely, I left Sonic CD out because it's, of course, it's gonna work on Windows 98, given that there's a port for it. So you're probably wondering, why did I leave Toho out? Well, I wanted to try Toho, except this happened. And in the case of this video, I don't necessarily have all too much time to install DirectX 8. So unfortunately, uh, that's just the way that things are gonna have to be. No Toho game this time. But that's generally gonna summarize gaming on this thing and Windows 98 on this thing in general. So overall, I think this is a pretty good Windows 98 PC, given that these were released and made a couple years after Windows 98 came out. That means you got hardware support, plus gaming works surprisingly well, even for the integrated graphics that I was using when playing the games. However, you may need to find a graphics card if you wanna actually play more intense games. However, 
for what it's worth, it's quite a nice PC. Furthermore, Dell has uh, drivers for this model on their website still, so finding drivers for it isn't going to be too difficult. These models aren't too pricey, however, you could be paying some money if you're looking to get one in decent enough condition. But overall, it's a great computer.